met me, my name is Todd Carmen, and this is my wife, Michelle. Thank you. I do that for her all the time. Um, we're glad you're here, and I want to introduce real quick uh, our executive director, uh, John Oldham, is going to come forward and say a few words and open himself the world time. Well, good morning, everybody. I, I usually uh, just kind of go off the cuff, but I'm learning that I put some notes together. I'm not going to speak that long. Uh, Matt, stand up. I, I, you know, this this is what Matt has learned right here. This is what Matt has learned. This gap program has been successful. At least for one. There we go. Well, uh, Oh, just a couple things. If you haven't been here before, how many people have never been to Harvest Cedars before? Uh, but, all right, so just uh, there's a ladies' room that's down here, and there's a men's room down the hallway over here, down to the right as well. So if you need to do that while you're here, and then we're going to have lunch over here, right, Todd? And I'm sure that you'll give all those. Uh, we have lunch prepared for you, and Michael has done uh, like a wonderful job. So what do I, what do I want to say? Um, First of all, I want to um, say to the parents, I want to thank you for entrusting your children to us here at Barbie Seekers. And they have been a pleasure to get to know. I have all of their pictures on my door, right? If you come by my door, you will see their pictures uh, by my door. And I pray for you guys, right? And I will continue, I'll leave those pictures there, and I will continue to pray for you, right? But I want to thank the parents for entrusting your children with us. They've had a this is, I mean, this is an interesting year for us here at Harvey Cedars. Uh, it's been an interesting year for the world. It's been an interesting year for our country. And so um, we haven't been able to provide all the work for them because we haven't had many people here. So it's been a little different than what we expected. Um, but I think there's been some benefits to that as well. I think you guys have spent a lot of good time together. My wife is a counselor at the school here, and, and she brings this counseling um, books to me, they have magazines and associations that she's with, and one of the things is that a couple, probably like about two months ago, there was a big article about gap kids, and one of the things about gap kids is that um, they do very well when they go to college, right, and colleges are actually looking for kids that have gone through gap programs, because they are uh, more focused, because they know a little bit more about themselves, because they apply themselves more. In college, we have a kid that was with us last year that um, didn't really know if the, she had the ability to go to college. She didn't really know that she wanted to go to college. Um, but from being here, she then applied to Karen, and um, and she didn't know if she had the, the the wherewithal to do that. She, I think, she has straight A's, right? We got to think back that she has straight A's there, maybe one B, right? And so, um, yeah, kids. Uh, I think they find out a little bit more about themselves, and I, I know that some of the program that uh, Todd and Michelle have done has been introspective, and uh, I think very helpful in understanding about yourself, about uh, your relationship with God. And it's my prayer that as you kind of leave here, although a number of you are coming back for the summer, is that um, you become more like him and that you take some of the things that you've learned here into life. I want to thank, uh, first of all, I want to, then I also want to recognize uh, Kevin, uh, who's on the board here at Harvey Cedars, so we have a representative. Uh, and I appreciate you coming down today. We got a little late notice, and uh, Kevin came down. He's very active here, uh, helping us with a number of different things, and I appreciate you being here and showing up, and I appreciate the relationship that we have, but also supporting uh, the GAP program here. And I, I want to thank Todd and Michelle, right? You guys, uh, Parents, I don't know how much you interact with them, but they have cared about your kids almost as much as their own. And um, they've done that. They've taught them about materials, but they've also taught them about life uh, and living life with them. And I think they've seen some really good examples about how do you live life uh, together. Uh, we also have some people that have also taught classes and been with them. And so uh, Lynn and Mike, Mike is here. Uh, Lynn, I don't see Lynn, she's probably here. Uh, but uh, I appreciate what you guys have done and the teaching and the different things. 
names. Um, Mike, who's doing the cooking, right, just taught a cooking class. Here's Liz over here, right? <laughs> um, in talking with some of the kids along the way, it's like I asked, what did you learn while you're here? What did you, what did you do? Like one of the things that, uh, one of my passions is, is that you guys learn a little bit about cooking, too, about life, some life skills. <laughs> Right, because you know we don't, we don't rarely do families sit down and eat anymore. And if you eat McDonald's every night between now and the time you're 30, you'll be dead. <laughs> so you need to learn how to cook, and it's expensive to go out to eat all the time. So one of my passions is is that you learn a little bit about cooking, and in family relationships, two people need to cook, both do. And so um, I heard a little bit about like at Michael working with Michael and Michael teaching you guys. Stuff. Not only, again, about cooking, but about life. And uh, Michael's done a great job. And Ken is, uh, I want to thank Ken for his involvement too with uh, teaching some stuff about work, uh, maintenance. And <laughs> did, did I miss any uh, any people that have taught classes that are here? Brian's not here, but I know Brian taught a focus. So anyway, I wanted to say about that, right? And then, uh, so a couple things that kind of struck me is that, uh, about you guys, um, nine out of the 10 that started here are still here, right? That, that kind of struck me. Um, and I want to, I want to say that's important, that you, that you finish things in life, that you don't kind of check out, but that you finish things in life. And we've seen that by, you're, you're here to the time of, of graduation. So that's impressive. I was impressed that you guys kind of all got along. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things about, you know, like when you go to college, you live in a, in a roommate or you're in a marriage or whatever, is that, you know, you got to figure out how to get, you got to figure out how to get along with people. And usually there's some associated drama with people living together. And you guys, although different, all kind of all got along. And that, I'm struck me. I watched it. I didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't see a lot of drama. I didn't. I didn't hear about a lot of drama. And so that impressed me that you all kind of got along and worked through some of your things that are different and things along the way. Hopefully, while you're here, you you grew and you learned about yourself, right? That you learned about yourself. Uh, you learned about God, and it's my prayer. One of my big passions is is that that you become more like him and you take that into the world that we live in and that others would see Christ in us. And so I think that, I know that you've got some of the coursework and the classwork for that, so hopefully, and I think a number of you have supported some of that in your life. That is one. And I need to also, um, I, I need to like apologize to you that we didn't have the work. I feel bad about that that we didn't have the people here, right, for, to add that extra uh, element that's part of our program here with the GAP program. So I, I'm sorry we didn't have that. Um, but it seems like we have figured out other things and other things have come along. And some of you have found some work outside and I know that, I know that Ray, who's gonna do some, I think his help has picked up a couple people and we've got some babysitting and, you work at Dunkin' Donuts, even though I never got my free coffee down there, but, but that's okay. Right? So I have talked way too much, but I also hope that you gain some gap, some life skills, and that as you kind of go on from here, that this will have been a very a year that you look back at and say, you know what, that was something that a foundation that I've built a lot of things about life on. Let's have a word of prayer as we start our time. Father. Thank you for this time where we can kind of be reflective, that we kind of also bring to conclusion this, this uh, gap year for these kids. We thank you for each one that's here, each one that's made it through the program. Father, I pray that some of the things that they have learned will follow them through life, and that, that things that they learn about you and their relationship with you has grown, and that because of their time here, that as they go out, that others will be pointed to you, because that's why we're still here that we would draw other people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Todd, I'm not going to take your notes.
You wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, I made those too, which, how rare is that? Um, I just want to talk a little bit about these guys and what it is that they've gone through um, and why we celebrate today. Why, why make a big deal? I mean, what? They hung out at the beach all the time, right? right? That was fun, right? Because the weather's so great here in the wintertime. So, it's always like it is right now. Always, all the time. Right through January, forget the 30 mile an hour winds we had a couple days ago. And we get all that, and then we don't get snow. And we just get cold, cold rain. So it can be really miserable a little bit here. And this year, it, have, it was a little bit lonely here because we didn't have the people. And, and John's absolutely right. You guys got along. And it was amazing. It was easy for Michelle and I because we weren't, we weren't playing referee and all that kind of stuff that, that has happened in the past. And, and we really, really appreciate that. But for the rest of you that weren't here, what did they do? And so I'm going to give just a, a quick run through of what it looked like during Waypoint, uh, what our classes were. You know, we went through books of the Bible. We went through Ephesians and learned what it looks like to be a believer. We went through Titus and we learned about, about leadership and church leadership and what does it mean to be a leader in the church. We, uh, we went through Mark, which is my favorite study. I think for a lot of them, as we, as we did some exit interviews and talked to them, Mark was a really favorite study because in Mark, we got to go through and, and follow that journey of the disciples as they figured out, who's Jesus? Who is this guy? And how they started out with a preconceived idea of who he thought he was, and then there was a lot of doubts, and, and then they actually ran for it, and it wasn't until the very end that they realized, this is who he is. He's a savior. He is the Messiah, and the Messiah is just not what we thought he is. But he's the Messiah. They, every one of them went from cowering and hiding to, to dying for him, for what they believed. And so we got to go that journey and, and, and look at how does that, how, how do we apply that to our lives? What's my journey? And, and how is my journey realizing who Jesus really is for me? And then am I willing to be a disciple and do what it takes to be a disciple? Uh, we, learned, we, we learned in James, went through James, and one of the things that stands out to me in James, we talked about just the other day, is fervent prayer. Uh, and at the end of James, talked about fervent prayer. Um, Went through some books. Peacemaker. Book Peacemaker. And, and we learned how biblical conflict resolution. And sounds really, really boring, right? Until you realize you need it. And these guys, they all looked in their lives and they sound they found things where either either it's hurts that they inflicted or hurts that they incur. And how do we deal with that? And how do we go back and make that right? And and they really peel, just started to peel that onion and things that they had to work on. That's tough stuff. And they did. And, and we talked about that, and there were relationships. We know that there's family relationships that have been healed through that, and, and distant past friendships that have been healed uh, through what they learned there and put into practice. Um, but through a book called Identity, Who You Are in Christ, and, and learned how, how, what is our identity as in Christ. Um, Brian went through the power of focus and, and talked about setting goals, and things don't get happen unless you Things don't happen, don't get finished unless you, you plan for them. Um, spiritual leadership, what a huge book. Spiritual leadership um, and, and what it looks like to be a leader in the church and the sacrifice that it takes and the work that it takes to put that on. Um, and then we went to the five love languages, and that was fun. We just wrapped up uh, the five love languages and, and how do we give and receive love and what does that mean for our relationships as these guys look forward to, uh, to marriage and those kind of relationships and how does it work with our family. Um, we did a video series, uh, Seeing God as a Perfect Father by Louis Giglio. What an awesome thing. What an awesome thing to understand with, that, that when we look at God, he is our perfect father. And, and to be able to, to rest in that and, and get that comfort. Um, Andy Stanley taught us about guardrails, how to keep ourselves out of trouble, how to set up those guardrails. And we know if we get too close here, we're going over the edge, and we need to bounce back and get in the middle and to keep our lives straight. And then also discovering God's will. What does it look like? To understand God's will, as opposed to just a great idea we think we have or people are giving us. Um, went through the armor of God. Uh, Priscilla Shire, the armor of God. What a phenomenal study. And once we, we learn that the outward, the things that we battle each day, whether it's the co-worker that annoys us, the family member that annoys us, the, the tough stuff that we go through is just the, the physical... Um, it is 
it's just that it is, it is the physical part that we see of a spiritual battle that's going on. And the remedy is in the spiritual world. And that God gives us all of the all of the armor for that and all the tools it takes to battle through that. And, and the key thing that pulls all those pieces of armor together is prayer and how powerful prayer is. And you'll see that that became a, a big deal for us. And yeah, I do. I want to thank Lynn and, and Mike for the class that they taught. And as we did our exit interviews, that came up a whole lot. Guys, where are you? Um, that came up a whole lot. It's one of the favorite classes. And I, I, they said that you're the favorite. Uh, whatever. Um, so, but it, it, was, it was a great class because they learned how to really study the Bible, how to take a passage and tear it apart and dig into it and find meaning in it beyond just, I read it through it. And that's a huge value. One of the, the core things that we did, and, and I think made probably the most impact after talking to everybody, was identity and destiny. It's a program that took all 12 weeks of the first semester. And we dug through, how am I created? How did God make me? What are my temperaments? Um, what are my passions? And how are we wired? My personality type. All, right? all those things are God created, and if they weren't actually created in us, God put us into an environment that formed those things. Mm -hmm. And so we learn about how, what do we look like inside? What are our passions? What are our core values? What drives us? All with the idea of what does that mean for our, for our, our destiny and what God has for us and his plan for us. And understanding, I told him a million times, if you get anything out of this whole time here, is that you were created for a purpose, and God desperately wants you to understand your purpose and go ahead. And through identity and destiny, we get to we get to just nibble, just just wear down at what is that purpose, and then how do I have the boldness to take the next step and move into that purpose? And so identity and destiny was huge. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of introspection. It was a lot of time digging, and there was some frustration and some tears that came out of that because sometimes we learn what we are and we don't like it, and we have to go back and decide, okay, how do I fix that and start working on that? And that, those are the kind of things that we that we did here. Um, we learned through identity and destiny um, what our spiritual gifts are. And then we learned how to, how to seek God's will. And the fact that prayer, I love it, Michelle said it the other day. Prayer is not a, prayer is, uh, i got to look at it. Um, prayer is a conversation, not a monologue. Mm -hmm. and, and listening to what God has for us and, and being guided in, in what he has. And God desperately wants us to know what's next for us. And we just have to learn how to stop and listen and dig into it. And so we've learned that and know our next step. And so for so many that are here, they, they've identified what a next step is. And some have just identified that their next step is to just keep digging deeper. And that's great. And that's great. God doesn't show us what's done, where we're going to be 20 years from now. Because if God showed me 20 years ago that I'd be living in New Jersey and dealing with high school and college age kids, I'd have been on a boat to Tarsus. I'd been running. Uh, and because that, that would freak me out. But he showed me the next step, and the next step, and the next step, and it ends up where God wants you. And there is nothing more satisfying than living in God's will and doing what he has for you. And that's what, that's what they have learned in their time here. So it's been a lot of work. And they've pushed through every bit of it, and they've worked hard for it. Um, one of the other things that we got to do um, is we got to, to get involved over at Calvary Baptist in Little Lake Harbor. And we are so appreciated. that They're so welcoming. Um, Pastor Mike over there is welcoming. We've, we've served in their food pantry one Tuesday a month. And we created an assembly line. And a car pulls up, and it's like, it, it is like, the, uh, like a pit crew coming out to this car, just loading food in the car and blessing those people. And so we got to get involved and get involved in a local church. And, uh, and in their college ministry over there. And, you know, that was just a whole nother facet of what they were able to do is to get, get kind of out of here and get plugged in with some other awesome college kids. And I want to thank Ray Bartlett um, for taking that on. Ray, Ray is, and, and I correct to say, a contractor. Ray is a contractor. If anybody understands a contractor, you do not have spare time as a contractor. But in his spare time, um, he is a college pastor over at Calvary Baptist. And, and he has dedicated a lot of time, and these kids have really, really appreciated and they've benefited from it. So, 
I have asked, I have asked Frank to come and speak and to give a challenge to our kids one more time. So, we're that right, if you would. All right. show up to church, it's like, you know, the, the, the pilgrims arriving on the Mayflower, and it's just a whole caravan of people, oh, the Carvins are here, Carvins party 20, uh, here are your, your pews reserved for you, and uh, just, just you know, the different activities we've been able to, to do with a lot of you, and uh, one of my favorite ones is, is when we were able to go on our, our little ski getaway, and and Kira was able to come with us, Kira Murdoch. And uh, I said, so Kira, are you gonna are you gonna ski? Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ski. I said, oh you've skied before. No. <laughs> oh okay, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of scared to death of this. Uh, okay, well, Kira, you you've uh, you know we've we've taught a lot of kids to ski over the years. Uh, so we'll we'll just get skis and and you know, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. And so we, we worked our way up through the bunny hill and, and then the magic carpet, and then, uh, okay, Ray, I'm, I'm ready to take the lift. And so we take the lift to the top of the bunny hill, which is still a bunny hill, but at the top of the bunny hill, there's, there's, a, good, there's a good whip at the top. And, and you know, so I said, well, the key is just to, you know, you start to the left and then you go to the right instead of going straight down the hill. So it's getting to the end of the day and, and she's been working her way down. And then all of a sudden, like, here, where's here? Zoom! Right down the hill! And, and literally, like, there's Kira in a, in a, like, it looks like Tom and Jerry snowball of, of, of disaster. And then there's the only time I've ever been skiing that I wanted to yell for. Okay. All of a sudden, out of this snowball comes a ski, and usually the skis have brakes on them, so they don't do this. And we have been we have been fighting with the ski all day. And I'm like, I don't know why it's, it's it's not clipping in right. Well, just push harder, and okay, it works. And and then at the end of the day, and I think this was the last run. Like we didn't do any more after this. This happens, and then the ski just goes. Watch out! Here comes the ski, and the ski is just gone. And people are like scooting out of the way and it's scoot, and it crashes into the barrier by the ski lift. And so that was our ski trip. And we took those skis and I said, hey buddy, these skis are defective. And he said, well, do you want a new set? And I said, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think we've conquered the fear. And what a great time we were, we were able to have. Uh, but yeah, uh, just getting to know all you guys and, and working with some of you guys on different projects and helping out at the house and uh, just being in our home, just a great connection for us and our family uh, to get to know you guys. And just to be here today, the honor that it is, and I do count it an honor and a privilege to come and share one, one more time from God's word. And I, I, I came here today and I said, hey, hey Todd, is there, a, is there a theme verse for Waypoint? And he's like, yeah, there is. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I said, that's what I'm speaking on today. And so uh, I, I do. I'm, I'm going to share from Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to start in verses 1 and 2. And it's just, I'll just start. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Who's speaking here in Proverbs chapter 3? Solomon, right? The wisest man and there's, there's many authors that contribute to the book of Proverbs, but Solomon is, is credited with a majority of the work. And here he is, the, the, the wisest man that ever lived. God said, Solomon, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. And he was blessed with wisdom and blessed with riches and wealth and, and everything that came with it. 
And so he's saying, my son, don't forget my teaching. Let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Guys, as you step out from here and, and we look to Solomon for instruction, remember that the key word there is keep my commandments, right? Obey my commandments. And, uh, you know, I have five sons. They are all very obedient children. And they're here today with, it, it's a rare thing, the older they get, that we're all able to come and, and be together. And it was hit and miss whether we were going to get some of the older kids today. But then at the last minute, everything worked out. And they're all here. And they obediently were sitting in age order. And they still are, except the little guy took my seat. So it's Andrew, Jesse, Jordan, Riley, Reagan. So there, there they are. They are. Okay. But, it, you know, as a father, as they listen to my commands, it, it like, it, it's awesome. It's awesome to see obedience. And, um, you know, one, most recently this week, I, I said to the, one of the boys, and you can decide which one of the boys it was. I won't share names, but I said, hey, I want you to take this new replacement window. I want you to go down to Holgate. I want you to rip out the old window that's damaged and put in the new window. Probably wasn't Reagan. Okay, just I'll rule that out. But Reagan, you probably could have done that, right? Yeah, okay. And then all of a sudden I'm getting pictures back, you know, because we're all connected now and we, we have these cell phones and iPhones and so I'm seeing pictures come back, old windows out, new windows in, things looking great. Man, this kid, he's, he's following my commandments. Now on the other hand, just last summer, I had another kid who was following my commandments, and we were out the boat, and we have a center console with a with like a really big motor on it that our whole family can fit on, and, and we're driving, and I'm like, yeah, just keep going, you're doing good. And he's like, yeah, I'm driving, driving the boat. And then all of a sudden, you, you hear that little noise, a little kind of hesitation, and then all of a sudden, the motor kicks up, there's a big rooster tail of mud and sand, and we are high and dry on a bar behind Beach Haven because we missed the channel, right? And, and then all of a sudden I'm like, why did you listen to me? I, why, why didn't you just look at the markers and not listen to your father? See, we have a Heavenly Father. You don't have to worry about His commands, if they're good or if they're, if they're bad commands. We, we have His Word. And, and guys, I want, I want you to take away with this is keep his commands. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Proverbs 3, and uh, chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success. Guys, the key word here is love, right? We need to love God, we need to love others. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39. The Pharisees came and asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? They're trying, to, they're trying to trick him up. They're trying to catch him in his words. And he says, let me tell you what the greatest commandment is. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with your mind. And he says, let me throw this one in for free. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Guys, when Solomon says here, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. It's the same thing that is the message throughout all of Scripture. And Jesus reiterates it and says, these are the greatest commandments. Love God and love others. And now we get to the theme verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. When it, when it comes to here, we, we need to trust, right? The key word there is trust. So we have three key words so far in our little lesson this morning. Anybody know what they are? Trust. Keep. Trust is the one we just talked about. Keep. Love. Keep my commandments and love. I heard it. Keep. Keep my commandments. Love God and others. Trust in the Lord. Right? We need to go through life, and as he directs our paths, if we're, if we're looking to him and trusting him, we will not go wrong. 
Now, Jesus also promised that in this life you will have trouble. But I have overcome the world. Right? So this isn't just going to be some, you know, all roses and flowers and, and great. No, you're going to have difficulty. But if you're, if you're stepping and following, that's where God wants you to be. That's the best place for you to be. Right? I, I have a buddy growing up. We were elementary school, junior high. His name was Scott. And we loved go-karts. Right? We had go-karts. I had this great go-kart that I stripped down, took everything off, sanded the whole frame down, like degreased it. Took it to, I, I worked in an auto body shop, so we set it up on the lift, and we're looking through all that leftover paint, and, and the, the owner was like, oh, magenta. You could paint your go-kart magenta. I was like, what's magenta? I'm, I'm, like, I'm like 11 or 12, right? Anybody know what magenta is? Ladies, come on, help, help us out. Pink. It's like a pink purple kind of deal, right? Am I, am I right? Magenta, magenta fingernails, Jesse, right here. Magenta. So I was like, sweet. Kind of little, kind of like a hot rodish looking thing. It had chrome and magenta. I mean, it was cool, okay? You just had to be there. So we're, we're ripping these go-karts, and uh, my dad, if you've been to my house, my dad lived, we grew up at my dad's house, like just a mile and a half down the road, and there was this big chunk of woods behind our house. We had a go-kart track, and so my buddy Scott had his go-kart, I had my go-kart. It's like Mario Kart, except Bartlett Kart. And we're just cruising around out in the woods, and all of a sudden, Scott's, Scott's in the lead. He's, he's like four or five years older than me. And this is in the 80s, okay? So Scott was like, he had, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is embellishment or for real, but he really did have this shirt, ACDC, and he had hair down past his shoulders, really thick, dark, black hair. So he had the metal band, I mean, you know, and all of a sudden, his engine catches on fire. Okay, fire, go-kart, if you know anything about go-karts, where's the motor? Behind, behind you, and so a guy with thick, dark black hair and a motor on fire, what does that equal? Fire plus long hair. Fire. Hair on fire, right? So all of a sudden, Scott's hair catches on fire. He starts swerving and like, it's, it's, it's going on, it's crazy. His, and then all of a sudden, he takes his eye off the trail and he misses the trail and he goes into an aerial launch off of a cliff, because if you miss the trail, you're, you hit the cliff. He goes into an aerial launch, his front right tire hits a tree, puts him into a flat spin. Well, his gas tank is on fire because there's a hole in it, okay? And when you, any physics buffs out there, when you put a go-kart with a hole in the gas tank that's on fire into a flat spin, there's something called centripetal force. And that ejects the gas out of the tank, through the hole, through the fire, and creates an aerial flamethrower. <laughs> so now, he's in an aerial flat spin, his hair's on fire, and now all the woods are on fire that we're in, too. He lands this in, in, a, in a ball of dust and fire, and, and we're, I, I literally felt like we were going to die. So this engine's on fire. I hit the brakes, jump down there, we're throwing dirt on top of the gas, on, on the gas tank. We all get, we get the fire out. We put Scott's head out. I mean, his hair <laughs> is not burning anymore. And we put all the fire out in the woods. And we were like, we, we looked like the Lost Boys. We're covered in soot and dirt and dust and we're sweaty. And we drag his go-kart back to his house and I just, Scott, I'm taking a shower. Then we hear fire sirens, like about 25 minutes later. I run, I grab, I'm like, oh no, we must not have got the fire out. I grab the bucket, I fill it with water, I run out, and there's a chunk of woods about twice the size of this room that is ablaze. And I just dropped the bucket. And I just, we waited for the fire trucks, and the fire trucks came. Nobody got hurt, no houses burned down, thank the Lord. Guys, this is what happens when we step away from the path that God has for us, when we take our eyes off the Lord, when we're distracted by temptation, by sin, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a burning mess. Don't do that. 
right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Lean on him, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Last thing I want to leave for you is, is just verse 7 and 8. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, feel the, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Keep my commandments. Love God and others. Trust in the Lord and fear God. Take that with you. Remember God's word. We, we have the answers. We have the cheat sheet for life. Is it going to be easy? No. But it will be rewarding. It will be fulfilling. You, you will have, you go back to verse 1, length of days, years of life, and peace that will add to you. There's something about following Jesus Christ with your whole heart, your, your soul, your mind, and your life that brings peace that passes any understanding. You guys have been imparted with wisdom this entire year through these classes, through the programs here at Harvey Cedars, through your own personal Bible study. Don't walk away from that. Trust in the Lord, and he will guide your paths. Guys, I'm proud of all you guys, and uh, we're looking forward to what God does in your life uh, coming forward. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ray. Okay, all right. Um, next, we have Rachel. Rachel would like to share a little bit about what she has learned through our program. So, it's all yours.
place and um, areas that I needed to fix my life so that I could actually live for Christ and um, God really revealed a lot to me and a lot of areas that I needed to fix. Um, One of the big things that I took out of this was that I I never knew this before, but like I can actually like hear from God. And I can actually like God speaks to me. And I I always thought it took a special person, like, to really hear from God. Um and so when we were working through identity and destiny, we had this thing called listening and you were supposed to kind of go off by yourself and just be quiet and kind of meditate and be in the presence of God and see if he would speak to you um, and I thought that was ridiculous <laughs> and I was like there's no way that he's going to talk to me um, but I tried it and it didn't work <laughs> big surprise um and then I decided, well, actually, we went to class, and I was very discouraged the next, I think the next day, and other people were sharing about how they had heard from God. And I was so discouraged, because I'm like, why isn't it working for me? Um, and I realized that I wasn't um, going into it with the right mindset. Um, so I went back again, and I read my Bible, and I prayed for a long time.
I, I rushed home and was in meeting with my family for a little bit. Um, and I didn't think I was going to be here for graduation. Um, but again, through prayers and stuff, I felt like God was really telling me to come back. And, and he was telling me to speak. And I didn't want to do that. And I was like, no way. I'm not doing that. But um, I really felt like he was calling me to do that. So he asked Kara, would you want to come pick me up? And, and, and I'm able to be here today. And I was so glad for Harvey Seasons and for this family that I have here. And you guys have all been a huge support. Um, because I'm just recently going through what I'm going through. Here we go. I'm ready.
that they went through and all the studies they did, I was doing it with them and, and trying to keep just one step ahead and it's not always easy to do. Um, so with that being said, we've learned a ton too through all this and we just keep learning as I hope we all just keep learning. So we have, it is, oh, right there. Um, so we're going to have lunch will be served. We're going to pull stuff out. It will be in here in the avenue, which is straight through here and you all will see it. We'll get that in there in just a few minutes. And um, she's telling us to stand closer. <laughs> And, uh, you guys do a group and so I'm going to go ahead and pray, and we'll uh, we'll have lunch. Could you get a picture with all the students? Yes, we, we, we would. Yeah. When we're, we're done, yeah, we'll get a picture yeah, with all the yeah. students. We'll do individual pictures. We'll do whatever, and then I'll actually sign your diploma. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not like a wedding like I'm doing. Okay. I'll do pictures of all of them together. Father, yeah, we just thank you so much. Uh, we thank you for this time. We thank you for those that um, have made the trip here and for bringing them here safely. God, we just thank you for each of these students and the work that we've seen uh, you do in them. God, we thank you for how you how you just led uh, through this and the creation of Waypoint um, and how you're working in this um, in Harvey Cedars. God, to do great things for your kingdom. Lord, we just ask you to uh, bless our time together for the rest of the day, and uh, and we thank you for the food that we're about to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching.